So, uh, good morning and welcome to Jubilee UK. Um, for those of you who like to take notes or things like that, don't worry about it. All the sessions are being videoed. Uh, David is at the back um, doing the videos in this room and all doing the videos in all the other rooms. And if you go to that short URL, that, um, that's a nice, easy one to remember. That will take you to the Juma Day UK YouTube page where all the videos will be there. So um, as Hugh said, my name is Brian Tiemann. I'm one of the co-founders of Joomla. You can find me on Twitter more often than not. Um, that's also my website. More importantly, um, I'm not a designer. I'm also not a developer, although I'm trying to learn. Um, more imp the most important thing to know about me is that I am incredibly lazy. And I really love open source and that goes with my laziness. Why does it go with my laziness? Well, two things. Sir Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is my standing on the shoulders of giants. So in other words, I can do what I can do because of everybody else, yeah? So I've not started at the bottom and worked my way up. I've started halfway up, and you've done all the hard work. I just have to do the cherry on the top. So that's one of the things I like about open source. One of my other heroes is Eleanor Roosevelt. And Eleanor Roosevelt said that you should learn from the mistakes of others because you will never live long enough to make them all yourself. Um, and that's also really important. Now, this is Jumma Day uh, last, last year um, at the old Microsoft building. Uh, they closed it down the next day, so maybe that tells a story, I don't know. Um, but in, in 2016, I also did the opening keynote. And in that one, I talked about how I use Inbox Zero. It's part of my whole thing about being lazy. And what I explained was I do Inbox Zero by replying with just yes to all the emails. Can Joomla do this? Yes. Can Joomla do this? Yes. So today, I want to actually show you um, a little bit more about my Inbox Zero technique. Um, so, how do I do this? Well, I want to talk about jam. Um, yeah, it's not the jam that my dad makes every year. This is his plum jam from 2015, I think, a really good year. Uh, but this, Joomla achieving magic. What do I mean by this? Well, every night when I go to bed, I dream of Joomla. I have a sad life. Um, and when I'm dreaming of Joomla, what am I dreaming of? What I'm dreaming of is making Joomla as easy as possible for everybody to use. But there's lots of, I want to make Joomla easy enough for this little chap to use Joomla, and also this guy. So what is a user? Do you guys want to come in and sort of, that, the latecomers, George, come on, there's a seat right over here on the front. Yeah? Uh, so what is a user? So I think it's important, before we say we want to make Joomla easy for our users, to understand what a user really is. So a user, it's a noun, and it's pronounced you, sir. But what does it mean? Well, what it really means, it's the word that we computer professionals use when we really mean idiot. And I want to make Joomla idiot-proof. How many times have you seen that message? Or rather, how many times would you like to have seen that message? User error, replace the user. What about this? If we could log into Joomla, and when you log in, you get this screen. Joomla thinks you are too stupid to use this feature and has disabled your access for your safety. To gain access and to prove to Joomla that you are not too stupid to use this, then you must take and pass the Joomla administrator exam. Would you like to do that now? And it, if you say no, it kicks you out. Or if, take, if you click take the exam, it goes to there. And so we now have the Joomla cert administrator certification, uh, which you can do here today. Um, if you've not already signed up, Richard, do you want to stand up? Um, after uh, the next break, um, if anyone hasn't signed up for it and is interested in taking it, come and see Richard. He can tell you all about it and stuff like that. So 
that would be a dream world that everybody's had training and certified and they can't use Joomla until they've passed that. I mean, it makes sense, right? We can't drive a car until we've passed a driving test. How can we use Joomla without doing a test? Well, it's not really about how easy Joomla is to use. That's the mistake we all make. We can never make Joomla ridiculously easy to use because there will always be new levels of idiots. It's our job as people who build websites with Joomla to make it easy to use for that specific user, for that specific client, because they're all different. So I don't build very many websites at all, maybe two, two a year. This is one um, that I built for my local synagogue. Um, most of it is behind a password login, so it's really not worth checking it. But it's a community website. Most of the people who are active in the community that are going to be constant contributing to it are of the um, elderly persuasion. Uh, they're not that used to using computers. Um, some of them have um, some disability issues. Um, it's a very strange environment. Even the younger ones in the community I discovered are also not particularly IT literate. Um, and I wanted to make this website. I was doing it for free as well, so uh, I really don't want to be getting a lot of support. I wanted to make this website as easy as possible for them. And I'm going to be showing you today some of the things that I did that made the website really easy to use. So how easy did I make it? Well, the website has been live for six months. In that time, they've added 50 articles. They've sent 26 newsletters. They've added 100 events, 300 plus users. They've uploaded five videos and 400 photos. And they've done all of that, and I've only had three emails saying, how do I do this? I've forgotten. Can you show me again? So what are the tricks that I did to make this website custom for them to make it really easy for that specific user. So what are my secrets? The first thing I want to tell you is everything, nine of the 10 things I'm going to show you today are new to Joomla 3.7. Uh, so some of them you might not have actually know about. Some of them, oh, actually, no, sorry, tell a lie. One of them is really old, but you didn't know about it. Um, some of them are things that you might not have discovered yet. Some of the things you might have said, I'll look at it later. And some of them might be, that's not for me. I don't see the point in that. So hopefully I'm going to show you the point. So secret zero is always use the latest release and to use Joomla 3.7.3. That's the obvious one. Mainly because of all the releases in the 3.x the 3 series, I think 3.7 has had the most groundbreaking new features that have, that have happened. Um, obviously, I think... There was a total of 700 commits of new pieces of code that went into 3.70, and then on the point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3, there's been you know, 2,000 commits in total. So huge amount of new stuff. So secret number one is to make the menu work for your users. Now, when I say the menu, I'm talking about the menu in the administrator. So this is the menu that we're all familiar with. Uh, we have a system menu. Uh, with global configuration, the users menu, uh, we've got the menu for the menus, uh, we've got content, which is a menu on its own, even though it's a component. Um, by the way, does anybody know why content, which is a component, is on a menu item on its own? Yeah, to make it easy to find. Actually, it, it was, it dates back 12 years when Joomla didn't have any other components. Um, for, for doing anything, and there were no add-ons. Um, so it made sense that content is the main one. It goes on its own. But of course, nowadays, people might use other um, content, editor, you know, content apps, extensions, or it might be a website all about, about events using J-Events. J-Events is the main thing, and it's stuck under that components menu. You also uh, might have noticed under the components menu, there's a lot of things which are one-time only use things, setting up the search, setting up the, uh, redirects, or there's things like admin, uh, in my case, I had admin tools and a key for backup, something for security and something to do my backups. So they're there amongst the, the 
actual components of content that I'm creating, such as an event or a photo gallery and stuff. In Joomla 3.7, you can now create your own administrator menu. So that has a lot of advantages. One of the first things is, obviously, you can now put them in the order that you want, but you can also name them what you want. So you can see here, I just have four top levels, content, members, maintenance, and tools. And under content, I have new article, all article, and contacts, and then I've got a separator for my events. So it doesn't say J events or RSVP, it says events. It doesn't say ACY mailing, it says send newsletter. I've put my maintenance stuff and my installers and my update, and then that's a Kiva backup and that's admin tools, but I've named them things that make sense to the user. They understand that that's the security options to change stuff. Admin tools, did Brian tell me I had a security option on this site? What was I supposed to do with it? So in Joomla 3.7, we can do this. You might think it's gonna take you a long time to set up. I did. I forgot to set it up before this presentation, so I had to quickly do it. It took me about 10 minutes to set up. So it, it's actually not a big deal. It, it looks like it's gonna be a long process, but it's not. It makes a lot of difference. I'm building the website now in the language of the users of that website. Yeah? They, on, on their website, J events and articles are the two pieces of content that they use. They don't understand the difference between the two components. They're just two different types of contents to put them on the same menu. It's all about putting the user right in the center. Designing the website, not just for the people who are gonna view the website, but for the people who are going to run the website. So if you look at some of the things, right at the bottom there it says memorability. It's much easier for them to remember that security is where they deal with the security of their website rather than admin tools. It's much easier for them to remember calendar than it is J events or newsletter to ACY mailing or whatever extensions you're using. I was also able to hide a lot of the stuff that they don't use all the time. So I'm looking across, Arc Editor has a, drop, has a menu option for configuring Arc. But I only do that once, probably, when I'm building the site. I don't need it there all the time. So I can either not have it on that menu, or I can just put it into one of the utilities menus at the end. It's not going to bother them every day. It makes it, it reduces, one thing it really reduces is that I think it's this one I need to click on. Clicking it, oh no, it wasn't that one. You know, it, it was this one. And it's reducing the number of times you do that. The more you do that, the easier it is to use. The easier it is to use the website to add content, to customize the content, the more often they will do it. And a website with new content all the time is the best type of website. Yeah, the best SEO advice you can give anybody is to add new content on a regular basis. If adding the content is a real pain in the proverbial backside, they're not gonna do it that often. They're gonna go, oh no, do I really have to? Can you do it? Or maybe I'll wait till next week and I can do two at the same time. It doesn't work. You wanna make it easy. You wanna, and this, putting the user right in the middle of your design process, both for the administrating and building the site and for the viewing of the site is the key. So secret number two is save them from WYSIWYG hell. Who's seen this? You've got a beautifully formatted page. You've got four blog articles. And someone has very nicely used uh, some Times Roman text for their body. They've used Comic Sans to highlight, and to really highlight it, they've got some red and some yellows in there as well. Yeah? And they love that because it looks great to them. Of course, and George is smiling because I've used orange. Um, George is not going to, if George is the only editor on the website and he's using orange on, every, on everything, that's fine. But as you can see, he's not. So it looks stupid. And what's worse, it makes George look stupid for doing it all in orange. No, it makes your website look stupid. Yeah? It's not a pleasant experience for your viewers. Why does this happen? Well, this is tiny MCE, default install on Joomla 3.7. If you give people all those options, they're going to use them. It doesn't matter if you tell them you don't need to use it or please don't. 
they want to make their piece of content really great. They want to make it really stand out. They may spend hours doing that formatting to get that lovely orange on there. And they may really love Comic Sans, but it breaks your site. So what we need to do is to stop them being able to do that. Well, one thing, bless you, one thing we can do in Tiny EMCE as of Joomla 3.7 is we can actually customize it. So some of you will know that before 3.7, Tiny EMCE had three different layouts. There was a simple, advanced, and experienced, I think it was. Um, but the problem was you could only have one of those active on your site. So everybody saw the same one. As of Joomla 3.7, you can now create as many groups as you want and to completely customize it. So if you go into the plugin for TinyMC, you'll see this configuration screen. Um, we can see right now we have three sets, set two, one, and zero, and they're assigned to different users, different user groups. Um, for the purpose of this test, I'm gonna create an extra group. So I'm just gonna go to the advanced. And you can see it says three, but I'm gonna make it four. And then you have to save it to make sure you've done it. it loads up, and it should now say set three, two, one. It does. And it's suggested that I use those icons. But first thing I need to do is assign it to the group. So I'm going to assign it to my content creators group. And I don't want underline. So just drag it and drop it, drop, drop it off. And then I want to add italic. And finally, I'm going to add the paragraph one. So when I've done that and save and close, okay, and then go to my article, you can see that now I have a much simpler editor. I've got bold, italic, undo, redo, bullet points, and the paragraph dropdown. And the paragraph dropdown, sorry, I forgot I did a video for this one, is the one that has my H1s, H2s, H3s. So I've completely hidden all that stuff that I don't want them to use. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. I, I could, yeah, you, you can still go into the code and edit it, but, um, but also what you can do is, of course, you're assigning the editors to different user groups, so you as the super user can still have access to the full um, editor. What, one th yeah, one thing that I've done as well on this particular site is I have content creators who are doing articles, and I have event creators who are actually using J events, and so I've done it slightly different for the event creators because I needed them to have a couple of different options. So that really makes a big difference, and it's simplifying it, it's making it really easy, it's limiting the mistakes that they can make, and it's more efficient. So secret number three is, actually this is one of the ones that's been in Joomla for years, and it's to show them their own content when they log in to the administrator. What do I mean? Well, so when you log in, you kind of used to see these two windows, uh, uh, popular articles and latest articles, but if you look at the one on the right, it says my latest articles, and they're all the ones that have been created by me, Brian. It's not the latest articles on the site, it's my latest articles. Now, I didn't know this existed, but actually, if you go to Module Manager, uh, filter it on Administrator, and go to create a new module of articles latest, give it, obviously give it its name, so I'm going to put my articles, Type faster, Brian. And you can set the order, set which category, but this is the trick. Set the authors to modify, authored or modified by me. Yeah? That's the trick that will only show on the control panel my own articles. So it means when I'm coming back in, when I'm logging in, I'm seeing a quick list straight away of the stuff that I've been working on recently if I need to make a change really makes a difference. They don't need to go to Article Manager and filter through your 500 articles to find that one that they need to change. You can also add this technique in a slightly different way if you're doing front-end editing as well. Um, for that, I'm not going to explain it now because I did write a really long blog post on it, and uh, there's a URL there, t.mn slash q, and you can read all about how to do that there. So secret number four. Secret number four is I create templates for my content. I want all my content to look the same, to have the same look and feel, not just in terms of what fonts I'm using, what CSS I'm using, but what layout I'm using. 
Yeah, I want headings and I want bullet points to go here. I want it all to be consistent. So the way that I do that is I have a category called content templates. And in that category, I have, in this case, blog template, job template, news, and event templates. And they're all, you'll see they're all unpublished. And what you do, when I open the news template, you get a dummy text one, but it's got my subheading, my sub-sub, my sections, everything. All the user has to do now is go in and edit that, and then go save and new. Sorry, save as, save as copy. And that will make it as a copy in the right place. Yeah? So I'm getting a consistent thing. It's also making your life a little bit easier for them. I'm not going H1s in the wrong place, and I'm not getting H2s before H before H4s and all, all sorts of other stuff. So that's, that's a really nice one. And then I've used the same trick for the, that I used for the, my latest articles to display a box with the article templates. And this time it's exactly the same, but authors is set to anyone and category is just set to the content templates. So again, they log in, the first thing they can see is the list of the recent stuff they worked on, so they can click on that if they need to edit it, or they can click on the templates to create some new content. Um, there is a much more advanced way you can do this content templating. Um, again, not going to talk about it today. Uh, Elise wrote a tutorial about how to do this. Again, it's on my blog, and it's t.mn slash s. That's a much more advanced way of doing these layouts, uh, these content templates, I should say. And that will really help you if you really want to push it. Secret number five. Uh, customize the edit page so it only shows what they need to change. So this is the uh, edit page on the front end of that website, and there's no alias field. That's done automatically, isn't it? They don't need to know what that is. Um, there's no public publishing date. Oh, there's a publish on date on the right-hand side, but there's no finished publishing or anything. That is not relevant for this specific website. So I've hidden all the fields that they don't need to use for this website. I've also used some, um, added some text boxes with some instructions to say, in this case, what read more should be. Um, also a little note to tell them that copy and paste, about copy and pasting from Word, it's best to do it in, paste it as text by doing Control Shift V. Just little things that's always on the screen for them. You'll see also on the image on the image box there's a note that said the image should be 900 by 200 pixels, 990 by 200 pixels. That's what I need it to be. Yeah, so I'm telling them and remind they don't need to remember. Um, it's all there, and I changed a few other bits, just the wording of some things. So instead of it saying, uh, you'll see on the publication details on the right, instead of it saying the access level, it says that the read more makes it visible for certain user groups. It's using the language that makes sense to them. Um, how do you do it? Again, I've done a tutorial on that, uh, t.mn slash r, and I have to, for that one, I really have to think, thank Sander for it, because it's actually based on an article Sander wrote for the Jumbler magazine. Um, and I linked to that one in, the art in my blog post as well, so you can read both of our comments, because we both do it slightly different ways. But again, really makes a difference. Sander, if I remember correctly, did that based on some user testing he was doing with his then girlfriend, now wife. I hope it's the same. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it just, it's on video, so I need to make sure that David doesn't have to edit it. Um, all about how did she work out what to do and stuff. And so that's how, that's how he came up with that idea, and I just expanded on it um, in some other ways. So number six. This is one that's been there for ages and people don't seem to know about it. You can drag and drop images in Joomla. Yeah? People say it. That we get quite often on the issue tracker feature requests to be able to drag and drop images. Well, you can. Um, you just go into the article, you go into the editor, you select the image, and you drag it and you drop it. And when you save the article, it will save the image into your images folder. Yeah, it's there, it does it. Um, of course, remember to resize the images before you upload them. You know, so all the rules about images still apply, but you can just drag and drop them. It makes life easier for some users. Especially some users are really used to dragging and dropping from other programs that they use. Yeah, if you use Microsoft Word and you want to put an image in, you've got two ways. You can do it from the menus and insert, or you can just drag and drop. 
If they're a drag and drop user, trying to tell them that Joomla has to use insert doesn't work. So you can drag and drop the image as well. Uh, number seven, hidden menu items, not hidden menus. What do I mean? Who has a website with something like that? Yeah, hands up. Yeah, a lot of you. Why have you done that? You've done that because you wanted some special URLs. For example, on the password reset module, uh, you wanted it, instead of to say uh, login, oh, yes, instead of it to do the default login view equals reset, you wanted something nice like reset. But you don't want it to appear on your menu, so you make a new collection for all these special URLs, and you just don't publish that menu. The problem with doing that is you get, end up with a huge long list of menus, but also when you go to something like your module manager and you go to assign modules to a page, you've got to remember that there's this other module, oh, this other menu that's probably down the bottom of the screen that you also need to set modules for. And it's a separate menu, so if you do all, it can't, doesn't work because you have to do all for both menus. And then all those special URLs don't look the same, and you forget about them, and it just becomes a management nightmare. Well, actually, as of 3.7, what you can do, you create the menu item in exactly the same way, but you create it in your main menu. Yeah, so it's still in the tree. You can put it in the tree. You can do whatever you want. But on the link type page, right at the bottom, it says display in menu. And by default, it's yes. And if you change it to no, it doesn't display in the menu. And now you can have hidden menu items and not hidden menus. Again, it's all about simplifying the process, making it easier. Um, little things do really well. If anybody's into the cycling, I'm quite a fan of the Tour de France, and Team Sky say it's not about major changes. It's about all these tiny little changes that all add up together to make one really big change. This is one of those tiny little changes you can make on your websites that will, in the long term, really have a big benefit when they all add up together. So, as you can see, a much simpler menu. So, number eight, automate everything that you possibly can. Okay, this one might be a little bit contentious. Um, I am saying that you should automate, um, that you should unpublish content, you should use the stop publishing on date, if you can. Depends on your type of website, but if you're doing a website for a community or for a business, and if you write in the article, special offer ends on the 1st of September, you know that right there and then you can set this article to be not published on the 1st or the 2nd of September. If you write, come to Juma Day UK on the 8th of July, you know that on the 9th of July that content is dead. So automate it, use that stop publishing field it will make your life easier. You don't need to go back. Uh, core updates. I am now a believer that we should automate core updates, that it should happen automatically. Um, I get, I absolutely get that for the power user, you're scared of, of hell of that, of things breaking. Fine, disable it. But for the ordinary user, automate it. Yeah. Um, SiteGround, hosting company, uh, one of the Joomla uh, they host the Joomla.com and the Joomla demos. They offer automatic updates for their clients. Uh, it's, in fact, it's enabled by default. And I asked them, what is the failure rate on that? What is the rate of support requests that they get uh, for, with people saying, you've updated my site, it's broken? It's under 10%. Yeah? They're at the bottom end. They're at the real uh, bottom end of the cheap end of the hosting. A lot of their clients really don't know what they're doing, they would never update their sites. Yeah, they just won't. They don't realize that you need to update it all the time. They don't understand those things. We do, but they don't. So SiteGround does it all for them. Under 10% have a small issue that can usually be rectified very quickly. Uh, so yes, I'm in favor of automatic core updates, of course, with a backup at the same time. I'm absolutely in favor of automated backups. Yeah, you should not be installing a backup solution on your website and expecting the user to remember to log in and press the button. That's stupid. Yeah? It's just stupid. Automate the process. Lots of different ways. doesn't have to cost you money uh, to do that. 
Automated extension updates. Okay, this one, some of the extension developers in the room will be going, yes, great. Some of the extension developers in the room will be going, no, don't do that. It's optional. But one thing I want to tell you is every time, I believe that every time you install an extension on your website, a kitten dies. Um, so I try to build all my websites with as much core as possible. It's not 100% core, but I do try to do a lot. It does make that automated update process much easier. Uh, so please save the kittens and only install those extensions that you really need to use. Again, small change will make life easier for you. Every, we just, uh, on the Joomla issue tracker, uh, every time there's a new release, every time, we suddenly get a load of people posting about these problems that they've got, that Joomla core has broken their website. You never hear from these people any other time of the year. They don't also don't usually respond to your how to fix it, but they straight away, they're reporting the issue. And nine times out of 10 this week, maybe more than 90%, maybe more than nine times out of 10, every single one of those was a problem with an extension. And actually the problem wasn't really with the extension. The extension knew there was a problem and had already fixed it, sometimes a year ago but they'd not updated the extension either. So they'd remembered to update Joomla because Joomla now tells you, sends you an email to update, but they hadn't updated their extensions as well. So it causes problems. More, it, more often than not, it's those extensions that are causing the problem, and the extension developer, it's not their fault. They've already fixed it. But you hadn't applied the fix. So save the kittens, only use those extensions that you need. Uh, secret number nine. Um, this is one that I did specifically for this website. Uh, the design that I built for the content required there to be a nice image on top of every article. And I told them that, if you remember on that previous slide of the editor, it said you need an image 990 by 200. The problem was quite a lot of the users forgot. And then the design looks a mess because nine pages have got this nice big image and one page doesn't. So what I did was I actually did some code. Um, it's, a, it's an override, it's a template override uh, for the uh, layout for the intro image. And all I really did was took the existing code and wrapped it with an if statement so that if it's not empty, do what you normally do, and else, do this bit. And what this bit did was says, put in an image, based on its category name .jpg. So I'd already uploaded a, an image for all the categories, and it would just automatically display that image if the user's forgotten to add one. Yeah? So again, I don't need to think about the idea. I don't need to think about checking the website all the time to make sure they've added that image. They don't need to get to, oh, Brian, I forgot to add an image. How do I go back and do it? It puts a sensible image in there anyway. And actually, a lot of the time we've discovered the images that I've chosen for those categories, they're actually going, I like that one. I don't, we, I don't even want to have to search for an image. I'm just going to use that. So it just made life a lot easier. And before anyone tells me there's an error on that code, I did simplify it for the basis of the slide. So you, yeah, you could use all sorts of different, there's all sorts of different things you could use, but I did it, as again, this was code for that specific site. Number 10, custom fields. So custom fields are the big new feature in Joomla 3.7, and if you use them in the right way, they can really make your life so much easier, both as a site builder as a, and as a site designer, and also as a content creator. Because for example, if you make one of those extra fields required, you're forcing them to not forget about the image. You're doing, you can do all sorts of different things. Um, but I'm not a fan of spoilers. Um, so if you want to know more about custom fields, uh, the session after this one, so it will be at 10, not 9.45, uh, with Alon, he's giving uh, an in-depth look at custom fields. Um, so if you haven't really looked at custom fields yet, strongly recommend it, because you're really going to change the way that you build, we build websites, especially content-rich websites. Uh, bonus one, number 11, and this is the last one of my uh, secrets to make your life easier, is uh, share this URL with your users. 
uh, t.mn slash help. Um, and if you give them that one, it will also reduce, yeah, if you say to them, look, please go to this URL before you send me an email, this really will save you some time. Um, yep. And finally, remember, go right back to what I was saying at the beginning, that quote from Sir Isaac Newton about standing on the shoulders of giants. Joomla does that for you. It's millions of people using it. Yeah? It's thousands of people developing, developing it. You as a site builder or you as a site owner are just adding on top of that. You're putting the cherry and the icing on top of the cake. That's what's so good. That's what makes it so great. And with that, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. And um, I hope that you come away from uh, this Joomla day with uh, a lot more knowledge and start building a lot better websites. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian.